So I am Amit Kapila. I work for Enterprise DB, and I work on both PostgreSQL as well as Advanced Server, uh, which is Enterprise DB's proprietary product. And today I am here to present the work on hash indexes, which is uh, done for PostgreSQL 10. So to start with, uh, the overview of this uh, presentation is that first I will talk briefly about the uh, hash indexes, like how what is the overall structure of hash indexes in PostgreSQL and how it is uh, being used. And then uh, I will talk about some of the locking improvements which we need to uh, do to enable uh, the wall for hash indexes. So the basic idea uh, uh, for this work is that uh, we can make the hash indexes wall logged so that uh, they can be crash safe. Right now, they can't be used in uh, many of the production databases because they are not uh, crash safe and people are scared to use it. So, uh, and we have uh, also improved the space usage of hash indexes. The disk size of hash index will be smaller in many cases after this work. And uh, yeah, the main thing is that write ahead logging and then we have also uh, improved some of the hash utility functions which can help in debugging the hash indexes or uh, knowing more information about hash indexes. And then I will talk about the further improvements that can be done for hash indexes. So unlike other indexes, hash index store the 32-bit hash code of each index item. Uh, which helps in reducing the size by itself. For example, if the hash index is on, uh, for example, the index is on varchar column or some large value column, it stores only the hash code, 32-bit hash code of, for it. And by definition, any operation on hash index is uh, O1. Uh, however, with duplicate, that is not completely true. And the primary, uh, they are primarily used in equality uh, search conditions. And uh, they are preferred to be used when the data in the index is unique. So this is the basic overall structure of the hash index in PostgreSQL. Like there are four different type of pages in hash index, meta page, bucket, primary bucket page, overflow page, and bitmap page. So here, uh, the meta page stores the metadata information about the whole hash index, like where are the split points uh, in the hash index, and the version of the uh, hash index, and stuff like that. And the actual data is uh, stored in the uh, bu primary bucket pages and the overflow pages. So as with uh, any hash uh, stuff, like the overflow pages gets allocated when more number of keys get indexed to the same bucket. Here, the primary difference between the bucket pages and the overflow pages is that if the items are deleted, all the items are deleted from overflow page, they, they get freed. But the bucket pages uh, never get freed. Otherwise, uh, storing the data wise, they both are same. And uh, the another type of page is bitmap page, where basically we store the information about the allocated and freed overflow pages. So this is to give you the basic idea how the hash indexes work in PostgreSQL or how the data is stored in hash indexes. Next I will talk about the locking improvements and the prime motivation uh, for doing this work of lo locking improvements is to actually enable the wall. Right now, many of the operations like split, uh, before this uh, work, many of the operations like split, they are under performed under lock and uh, heavyweight lock, and uh, they were doing uh, performing unbounded number of steps due to which it was difficult to make them wall logged. So the work we have done is uh, to change the heavyweight locks to lightweight locks. So what exactly that means is that in PostgreSQL terminology, the heavyweight locks are used to uh, lock the uh, database objects like tables, rows, etc. Whereas the lightweight locks are used to 
log the shared object uh, share, shared memory objects so in general uh, the lightweight lock mechanism in postgresql is uh, quite cheap as compared to heavyweight lock mechanism so by uh, just changing that it uh, improves the performance and uh, the another thing it uh, gets us is that now the scans and inserts in the hash index can be performed in parallel to split of a bucket so uh, and uh, in this work the other thing we have done is to improve the concurrency between va vacuum and scans so if uh, prior to this work if the vacuum is happening on particular bucket no op other operation can happen because it takes the exclusive lock on the bucket which disallows any other operation on that bucket but now uh, we have changed that locking strategy and now the scans can come along with vacuum but uh, there is a limitation that scans can only proceed uh, the vacuums and this ca this could be very helpful in some of the cases where there are many overflow pages in the hash index and uh, the ma major thing uh, by doing uh, this work is that now the split operation can be interrupted and can be completed at a later time so uh, prior to this work basically if the system crashes or anything happens during split operation the split operation could not get completed uh, afterwards so we have ensured that uh, the split operation can be completed at later time and this was one of the primary requirement to enable the wall so another kind of locking improvement is uh, as of uh, prior to this work uh, any operation on the hash index scan or insert has to access first the meta page and to find out uh, the bucket in which the tuple exists either for inserting the tuple or for scanning that tuple so the traffic on the meta page was very very high because every operation has to access the meta page so even though the meta page exists in the shared buffers but the traffic on shared buffers was quite high so we, what we have done is we have created a backend local cache for the meta page and uh, cached it so that you don't need to access it from the shared memory or the shared buffers and we do invalidate this uh, cache if the meta page gets changed but it, it generally helps in the read only operations to a very high degree so after this uh, work uh, to see the impact of this work we have done some of the uh, performance improvement uh, testing for this work so this is mainly to show uh, the performance comparison between hash index and b tree so uh, this test has been done on power 8 machine with 24 cores and 192 hardware threads with 492 gb ram and this has been uh, the test is basically a pg bench read only workload where data fits in shared buffers so the first test uh, is just to compare the performance of 9.6 versus head for just for the hash index so here we can see that the performance of uh, raw hash index has been improved from up to 81% at various uh, and it is almost better at every client count the impact is uh, more pronounced at higher client counts because of the locking improvements like we have made lightweight locks and we have cached the meta page so that has helped uh, hash index uh, at higher client count so uh, th then we have tried to compare the hash index performance with b tree index and uh, here we can see that uh, if uh, we see that the b tree index is much better than uh, hash index 9.6 whereas the hash index of 10 uh, performs even better than b tree so here uh, we have seen that the hash index for this pg bench workload hash index performs uh, around 10 to 22% better than b tree index but 
uh, and in addition to these tests, some of the other tests have been done for hash indexes where uh, if the data is on the uh, where the data is unique, uh, and we uh, have seen that uh, around 40 to 60 percent uh, performance improvement for some of the workloads. And this has been reported by uh, Jasper, who is sitting here, that in some of the workload, it's uh, improved the performance uh, to a very great degree as compared to B tree. So before going further, if anybody has any questions. Okay, so what's the name? Paul. Mark. Paul. Paul. Okay, Paul has asked a question that uh, can you give us a, a use case where hash index could be used over B tree? So, for example, what I have uh, been uh, listening from the people is for UUID column, for example, where unique data is there, uh, or for any other kind of uh, places where the column is totally unique. So, there the hash index could be used over B tree and primarily when the, there is an equality search. Like for greater than and less than, hash index won't get picked up. So some such cases it could uh, be used and uh, we can see in some of the workloads the performance could be improved. Okay. Uh, moving to the next slide. So apart from the performance we have also tried to look about the space uh, how hash index takes the space uh, on disk and can we improve on those areas so the primary uh, problem what we have seen in terms of disk uh, size consumption is that prior to postgresql 10 each split in hash index generally doubles the size of the hash index and to mitigate this problem, we now divide the larger split points into four equal uh, phases. So what does that mean is that instead of growing uh, from 4 GB to 8 GB uh, immediately, we now grow the, uh, increase the size of hash index from 4 GB to 5 GB, and 5 GB to 6, and 6 to 7, 7 to 8. So basically it is done in the different uh, equal size of phases. So what this gives us is that basically we try to come to an algorithm where we increase the space as we need more. But earlier it was like they increase the size in the bulk and if it doesn't get used, the unnecessary the size on the disk will be uh, consumed but actually it won't be used for the uh, actual index values. The next area is that the cleanup of the dead items. For example, whatever the items have been deleted, those space uh, was not reclaimed properly and neither reused on in the next inserts properly. So we have implemented a uh, single page vacuum where we, if we find the items as dead in the heap, we mark uh, in the index also page at a time uh, all the items as dead. and if during insert we find that the there is no space in the particular bucket page then we try to clean all the dead items and adjust the uh, newly added item into that uh, same page prior to this this work was done but only during the vacuums or in the via some back end operation so how does this help is that this accelerates the uh, space recycling like for example, for the new inserts, we not we always don't allocate new pages. If there are some dead items or deleted items, we reuse those space, and it reduces the basically bloat in the system. So <clears throat> after this, uh, to see the impact of uh, this work, we have done uh, some size comparison of hash index and B tree indexes on UUID column. So here we have used actually the schema of uh, PG bench table, PG bench accounts table. 
it is very similar to that schema if some of you are aware of that the only change is uh, that we have uh, on instead of aid column account index we have create uuid uh, type of column and uh, created an hash index on it so in the next slides i am using going to use the uh, term scale factor where scale factor means if the scale factor is 10 uh, this means there are 1 million tuples in the table so we need to correlate the graphs in the similar way so uh, for 100 tuples 200 we need to accordingly scale uh, assume it as uh, those many tuples so as the first test we again try to compare the size of hash index with respect to size of hash index in 9.6 version so here we can see that the hash index size in the 9.6 version which is prior version is about 45 to 40 50% larger than the hash index size which the postgresql uh, version 10 will have so this in itself is a very big improvement and then we uh, for the same test uh, now we have created b tree index uh, on the uuid column and then we have tried to compare the size of both the things so in the head we have seen basically in the postgresql 10 that the size of the b tree index is 15 to 32% larger than the hash index size so what both of the previous test and this test indicates is that if you have a unique uh, data then the size of the hash index could also be smaller than b tree and it could also improve the performance for read only workloads uh, as compared to b tree but yeah in some cases uh, still like for read write performance or some uh, write operations still it, there is a chance that b tree could be faster but i have not evaluated in any great detail those were kind of workloads any questions okay so the question is that uh, if the hash index is created on a date column whether it could be used for a range search like hash index greater than uh, id or date is greater than this date and lesser than this date yeah so in those uh, cases the hash index can't be used it is mainly for the equality equal equal to uh, searches the and the main reason is that uh, in b tree index or the other indexes the data is stored in the sorted form here the data is not stored in the sorted form that's why we can't use uh, this uh, uh, range search we have to actually scan the whole hash index to find that data so that is uh, the difference so so far the hash index is somewhat faster yeah <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's only a little better. Yeah. Why would I just use B tree instead? But you see uh, the cases like uh, here we have just seen the cases. If you see this line, like where the data fits in the shared buffers, for example, uh, like because the size of hash index is now smaller than uh, B tree. now you could have some cases where hash index could be either fit in the shared memory or shared buffers whereas b tree index cannot fit into the uh, shared buffers or shared memory uh, so in those cases it will perform much ahead because then for hash index you don't need to do any io or uh, you need to go to the os cache whereas for b tree index you need to always go to uh, need to perform the io so or very very large indexes it could uh, still perform better like uh, in one of the tests jeff has uh, sorry jasper has seen that even it could uh, improve till 40 to 60% so i think it is not bad <laughs> it is not 
uh, fair to say that it is small, but yeah, I agree that it is not enormous, some two times faster or like that. It is not in that range. And the reason is also that it is not, maybe hash index is faster if we just use it. But there is, in PostgreSQL for accessing any uh, index or the heap, you need to bypass, you need to go through all executor and there are different kind of overheads for query processing. So even though hash index is faster than B3, theoretically also like uh, with O1 O and O log n, it still is in some margins uh, better than B3. Does that answer? Okay. Where you're not using the range, you're not using the sorting of it or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would throw a hash on that instead of a B tree as your default? Yeah, and uh, the other thing is uh, about uh, like, re how, do we perform write operations? Because write operations, I have not uh, gr uh, shown any graph, but I have no evidence till now that hash index in uh, performs better in write operations as well. There are few bottlenecks we know for write operations, but yes, if you have read only, mostly read only operations and the hash index, the index size is large, it is on unique data, then I think it is very much advisable to once test and see the, that how it performs in your workload. And it should, uh, there is no uh, question of it not performing better than B3. Okay, so uh, moving ahead, actually now I come to, th this is all about the performance part of hash index. Now I uh, come to the part of uh, basically how we have made it a wall logged or what all we need to do uh, to make it uh, wall logged. So th there is some uh, basically, uh, Making it wall logged means any operation needs to be done atomically. So the code of the hash index in PostgreSQL was not at all written with the view that the operations could be made atomic. So there are many places in the code of hash indexes where operations that are atomic were not performed together. So we need to change uh, all the places, all over the places or all over the different operations so that those operations get performed together and uh, they can be wall logged. So the first example I will take is the squeeze bu bucket operation. Squeeze bucket operation is when in the vacuum after uh, deleting the items, we try to squeeze the bucket chains. Like uh, we try to move the tuples from uh, later in the bucket chain to earlier in the bucket chain so that we can free the overflow pages which are later in the chain. So in that operation, we were moving the tuples one by one from one page to another page. So if we try to log it that way itself, what could happen is that some of the queries on the standby where we do it uh, via wall log, it could show the uh, same tuple twice. So uh, that, that uh, kind of problems were there. So what we have done is that we have ensured that all the tuples uh, get moved from one, uh, one bucket page to another bucket page in one go. The next operation was overflow page allocation. Basically allocation of new page and addition of the same in the overflow page chain. So whenever basically we allocate the new overflow page, there were two steps. One is allo we allocate the new page and then add it to the bucket chain. Those operations were also in the code uh, performed separately. But if we would have logged it uh, as it is, then it could very well happen that if the system crashes after uh, the new allocated page, it, it will never uh, be get added in the bucket chain. 
So that page will get lost forever. So we need to ensure that both those operations get performed together. And uh, similarly for the uh, split bucket operation, uh, basically the split bucket is then when the number of allocated buckets get uh, filled, we need to split the buckets such that uh, we increase uh, the number of buckets and move the buckets from uh, previous buckets uh, to the uh, older buckets to the newer buckets. So in this, the start, the start of the split operation involves updating the meta page and marking old new buckets to indicate that the split operation is in progress. These operations were performed uh, separately and logging them separately could again lead to some uh, wrong query results. So again, basically this is almost as similar like we try to uh, see that all the operations are performed together in one critical section. So <clears throat> similarly for the create index operation, it, it involves a creation of a different type of pages in the index and the initialization of same. So in this code actually uh, for uh, while doing the operation and while replaying it, we need to almost use the same code. So uh, we have uh, reorganized the code such that it could be used both during the de uh, do operation as well as the redo operation. Redo means during replay. So this, uh, what this allows us is to write the wall record for each of the sub operations and we do not try to write the single wall record for all of the create operation because if it fails anywhere in between, it will roll back the entire create index operation. So now uh, come to actual uh, write ahead logging. So prior to uh, PostgreSQL 10, if uh, any of one of you have ever tried to create the hash index, you will always get this warning that hash indexes are not wall log and their usage is discouraged. So you can imagine that most of this work has been done just to remove this warning. <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah, but and we have achieved in PostgreSQL 10 that uh, this warning is now removed and you can safely create the hash indexes. So, yeah, uh, basically it can be used on now standby prior to this uh, wall logging. It can never get used on the uh, standbys. And if you are, I'm not sure if uh, some of you are aware that we have a snapshot to old feature, which in some cases reduces the bloat. And that could also be now enabled for the tables with hash indexes. Uh, so this also is a big win uh, along with uh, the wall creation for hash index. And the hash index operation like create index, insertion into hash index or deletion of uh, from the hash index, all these operations by themselves doesn't uh, provide any guarantee. It is just that individually we have to write wall record for each of these operations to make them crash safe and to make them robust. <clears throat> so again, uh, the create index uh, writes multiple wall records. First we write a record to cover the initialization of the meta page and then for each of the bucket page and then uh, finally for the bitmap. So as I have told in previous slides that we can now write the operation for individual atomic operations or the individual operations. It is not important for index creation to appear atomic because the index isn't yet visible to any other transaction and any failure will roll back the whole operation. So uh, any an insert that causes uh, the split constitutes of multiple uh, atomic operations like insertion itself, allocation of a new bucket, overflow bucket pages, and update meta information to indicate split is in 
uh, split is complete. If the system crashes in between any of these multiple operation, uh, multiple atomic operations, after recovery, old and new buckets will be marked with the flag to indicate that the split is in progress. So, as I have told in some of my previous slide that the index split operation is now interruptible, which means if the system crashes in between uh, the split or before the start of the split, we can actually complete the split at the next insert or next split from the old bucket. So, that allows us uh, to now wall log it. Otherwise, without that, we could not, we could never make this uh, crash safe. Like after crash, if the split cannot be completed, the results could be wrong. <coughs> so, a deletion operation uh, uh, similarly constitutes of multiple atomic operations like uh, removal of tuples and then marking in the buckets that uh, the bucket is clean and updating the meta page with the uh, red, uh, reduced live count. Now, if the system crashes in middle of these operations, it can maximum uh, loss is that in the, in the next vacuum, you have to again try to uh, clean the buckets which are already clean, basically which does not contain the dead tuples. But there is no harm or there is no uh, wrong results for the queries. We can improve this situation in future if required, but as this was a very, very rare case, so we would not, we have not tried to uh, increase the complexity in code. So, uh, a squeeze operation uh, moves the tuples from one of the buckets later in chain to the one of the buckets earlier in the chain. So, it writes wall record either when the uh, page from which it is moving the tuples becomes completely empty or when uh, all the tuples are mo moved to a new uh, or the tup uh, or the bucket to which it is moving gets filled. So, only in those cases uh, we try to wall write the record. This is basically to accomplish the operation which I have told like moving uh, tuples page at a time so that everything appears atomic uh, to the system. If the system crashes in middle of this operation, after recovery, oh, sorry, uh, the operations will work correctly, but the index will remain bloated until the next uh, vacuum squeeze, vacuum squeezes the bucket completely. So, this way it is uh, kind of crash safe. So, next step is that after we have written all the code for this wall logging, because this is a uh, kind of di uh, data format change, the biggest hurdle was how to ensure that everything is quite safe so that users can use it. For that, we have uh, primarily developed a new tool called wall consistency checker, which has been developed with an intent to test this feature, but it gets used with uh, existing PostgreSQL and future uh, wall related changes uh, for uh, this mechanism. And uh, so, I will not try to go deep into that feature, but basically what uh, it does is that it provides one GUC variable. If we enable uh, this GUC wall consistency checking, then this variable allows a full page image along with each wall record to be written into the wall. And during the replay, we replay the wall record and then try to compare the page with the stored image of the page. If both matches, this means that the uh, operation is consistent. So, uh, in general, this uh, uh, tool could be otherwise also used in the production workload to basically verify. Uh, the consistency of the PostgreSQL. And then uh, we have also done automatic and manual crash recovery scenarios, so that the we try to crash the system uh, after half writing the page or by uh, writing it in a torn way and try to uh, recover it uh, after the this feature. 
and it gets recovered in most of the cases. So, and it, we found a few bugs also during development of this. And uh, we are able to accomplish uh, finally. So this was the way it has been used. Any questions? <laughs> How many pages? Uh, so the question is for any of this operation, either split or uh, insert, how many wall pages are touched or the data pages? Okay, 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 yeah. Actually, it depends on <coughs> uh, operation to operation. Like if it is a simple insert and you have a space in, the, in that page itself, you can directly insert uh, into that page. So that will touch just one page of the things. But if let's say it, uh, we have to split the things. So actually in that case, we will have to, at the very minimum, we have to touch two pages. One is the old bucket page and another is the new bucket page. And if the bucket has overflow pay, uh, change, then we need to touch multiple pages similarly. So it depends on uh, the case to case. But in general, in most cases, we will touch one page only. Okay, so moving further. So uh, we have uh, also developed the uh, some of the hash utility functions just to view the hash index information, like once the hash index is created or some work is done on it uh, to see the overall picture of hash index. For example, this function pgstat hash index, which has been added to pgstat tuple extension, shows us the total number of bucket pages in the hash index, the number of overflow pages, the number of bitmap pages, and number of unused pages, total live items in the hash index. So basically, all the metadata kind of information for hash index uh, you can retrieve it. This can tell us the basic things like how, how much is your hash index is actually used. And then uh, we have added individual hash functions to the PG stat, uh, page inspect extension uh, to view the each, each bucket page or each page of the hash index, the detailed information about each of the page. For example, this hash page items will tell us the information about uh, any bucket page or overflow page that how many tuples it contains, whether the, how many are live, how many are dead. So this helps us in uh, even, this can be treated as a debug utility. If your hash index has some problem, we can see the values uh, in uh, each of the hash index page. And uh, the hash uh, meta page info uh, returns the information stored in the meta page of a hash index. So actually, uh, if we see that the, all these functions are, exist for other type of indexes also. So this is kind of compatibility with other type of indexes. So yeah, this is all about the work we have done for hash indexes. In brief, I will tell some of the further improvements which can make hash indexes uh, better. So we can add the unique capability uh, to the hash indexes and we can speed up the create index operation as well. Like uh, we can bypass the buffer manager layer and uh, perform insertion page at a time as we do for the B tree. So create index operation can be improved and for the right performance. Actually, as of now, for each insert operation, we need to update the meta page by taking a lock on it. So if we try to come up with some way where for each insert, we don't need to uh, update the meta page, we can further improve the performance of the same. In the squeeze bucket operation, where we move the tuples uh, to squeeze the bucket chain, 
we have a locking strategy such that before uh, we only release the present uh, bucket chain after taking the lock on the next bucket in the overflow chain. So this in general is not bad, but if we can come up with some strategy where the operations could be uh, for a squeeze operation, we don't need to keep a lock for previous bucket that could again improve its uh, concurrency. And uh, now in the hash index, as I have told, we just store the hash code. So supporting uh, some of the things like push down of scan keys or multi column index or index only scan are not very straightforward. Because for example, index only scan, we need the actual index value also. Whereas we, in the hash index, we have just the hash code. So for such operations, we might want to later on store the hash value as well. Sorry, index value as well in the index. So yeah, this is all about the hash indexes. Uh, in the end, I would like to thank uh, my colleagues Ashutosh and Mithun who have helped in taking some of the performance data. And in general, I think this is not the, all the work done by me. There are many people who get involved in the community in this work. One of them is Jasper who is sitting here and other of my colleagues like Mithun, Ashutosh, Kuntal, Dilip. There are many people. This was a very big work for PostgreSQL 10 and uh, many people were involved in uh, completing this work, including Robert Haas, who is a committer of this uh, work. So yeah, that's it from my side. Any questions? Yes. <laughs> yeah. To now being something that people can use is a, a great thing to have. So. Thanks a lot. Thanks. It's quite encouraging. <laughs>